This is Stacy Marshall with Printwear Magazine. Matt Vassallo with TheRidingStoneWorld.com. Richard Greaves with ScreenMaking.com. Brian Walker with RTP Apparel. You are listening to the Two Regular Guys Podcast. 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 It's hosted by Terry Combs. Terry Combs. Terry Combs. And Aaron Montgomery. Aaron Montgomery. Aaron Montgomery. Keep on listening. I don't know if these guys are or that regular. All right. Well, welcome, welcome in. To the show. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, it is Friday, guys. February 7th, 2020. I am Eric Campbell sitting in, as you can see, for Terry Combs. And you can find me at ericcampbell.com. Yes, indeed. I was like, who is this guy sitting next to me over here? But uh, no, I, Terry is a little under the weather. In fact, he was uh, forced to skip the uh, NBM show. So uh, we wish Terry a speedy recovery and hopefully he gets well soon. He's got uh, the grandkids there. So he says, uh, may have picked up something from the grandkids. You know, <laughs> those kids have some. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Entirely possible. He exactly. brought back some creeping crud there. Yeah. But uh, hey, imagine Terry missing a show. I don't even know. The, the, yeah. Is this the first time ever? <laughs> <laughs> possibly, possibly. Such so. a road warrior. For yeah, sure. wishing the best for Terry. Cool. Well, I'm Aaron Montgomery, and you can find me over at AaronMontgomery.info. <laughs> uh, today, we'll be welcoming in financial advisor, Michael Momeno. And uh, he's with a company called Money Concepts. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to talking to him. We're going to just talk about road mapping and planning and financial planning and, and some really good stuff that uh, the regulators out there, I think, are going to be able to use. So uh, we've titled today's show, The Roadmap Your Way to Business Success in 2020. But uh, before we get to that, Eric, we have a really special guest that we're excited to uh, welcome into the show here. And and uh, so let's let's just, without any further ado, let's go ahead and, and uh, welcome in start off chatting with Jay Bear, and uh, he's going to be presenting the opening keynote at ThreadX. And uh, me being a customer experience geek, I'm a huge fan of Jay's work. Uh, he's the founder of Convince and Convert and author of several of my favorite books like Hug Your Haters and Talk Triggers. Plus he hosts an award-winning social pros podcast that uh, he's in his eighth year, over 400 episodes he told us earlier. So welcome to the show. Let's awesome. uh, bring him in here. Jay, welcome hey. to uh, Two Regular Guys. Aaron, Eric, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you so much for having awesome. me. I would rather be on a show called Two Irregular Guys. I think that would be a more interesting uh, title, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Pumped to be that, here. That's usually my title. I jump in here as the third guy and I yeah. always go, there's the two regular guys and I'm the one irregular guy. Yeah, three, it's I, three it's, regular guys podcast. That's, that's, right. that's what I figure. I want my fan base to be called the Irregulars. So everybody, <laughs> I love it. I love <laughs> that's it. your turn from here on out. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> I'm here to help. Yeah. All right. God. Man, I'm pumped for the show. I can't wait to see everybody in Scottsdale. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be awesome. Thrax going to be great. But the burning question everybody has. Now, this is something Terry put in here. So you can get upset okay. with him. Okay. He's taking, taking too much of a joke on this stuff. But uh, regulars want to know. Did they already pick out the plaid suit for yeah, Threadex? Yeah, uh, funny story. So let me let me, <laughs> yes. let me step that up for a second. So yes. um, uh, yeah, Threadex, I'm going to talk a lot about customer service, but I also talk often about customer experience and word of mouth and, and the idea that competency doesn't really create conversation, that just running a good business is obviously important, but it doesn't necessarily create word of mouth. I have a word of mouth kind of hook that I use in my business. And it is a website, uh, dressjbear.com, dressjbear.com, actually. Uh, and, awesome. and you can go there now if you like. And and it has uh, all the different suits that I own. I, I'm the plaid suit uh, guy. Uh, these suits are not embroidered. I apologize. Maybe we can work on that. Uh, and, <laughs> and when people hire me to come give a presentation, they get to pick which suit that I wear on stage, which is a lot of fun. Uh, and and then people feel like they have um, some... some uh, uh, you know, ownership of it. But I literally just got uh, the email yesterday um, from ThreadX. Nice. It is the knockout navy and red plaid, one of my favorites. So it's dark, dark blue uh, with uh, with r dark red and white uh, window pane kind of plaid. It's going to be great. Uh, I cannot wait. So you can look forward to that one. Nice, that, nice. So that it, is so awesome. That is awesome. So it is picked out. Good. The regulators yes. can yes. Uh, breathe a sigh of relief that we're we're set and ready to go because this, this thing's coming up pretty soon here, Jay. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, so we're obviously excited to uh, meet you in Scottsdale in a little over two weeks. What What are you looking forward to learning most about the garment decorating community that's coming together for this event? Actually, a lot, right? And and so one of the great things about about my work is that I get to learn just enough to be dangerous about a lot of different organizations, right? Yeah, so in yeah. the next seventy two hours, 
uh, I'm going to Florida to be part of the International Franchise Association. So all franchise businesses. Wow. Very cool. The next day, I'm going to Mexico uh, for the Tree Care Industry Association. So people who own companies that cut down and take care of trees. So that's all right. The next day, Australia for Volkswagen of Australia, right? So you can see oh, wow. the the array of <laughs> things uh, is fascinating, right? But but I say that because uh, my son has an, a, a side business uh, where he uh, uh, has his own kind of fashion line where he Very is cool. decorating uh, apparel and and selling it in his own website and to his uh, associates in, in college. And so he's been doing this since he was 15, started awesome. his own uh, apparel decorating business at 15 years old. So I am disproportionately excited and interested, <laughs> uh, in this, in this community. So I'm really, and I'm going to bring back some, some ideas and trends for, for current small businesses that are just starting up that I can uh, share with him as well. Awesome. I, what, what's you his may company, or may Jay? not know a couple of people, by the way, now to <laughs> help out with that. But yes, it's called uh, Mirage. His brand is called Mirage. His website okay. is uh, Mirage Way, uh, MirageWay.com. And, uh, and so he sells uh, custom designed hoodies and pants and sweatshirts and all that, mostly screen printed. Uh, he actually, uh, weird kid, right? So so for for Christmas, you know, most kids want, I don't know, Xbox game or or <laughs> or whatever. He wanted a uh, screen printing. Uh, machine. So we, we got him a, a small, small screen printer for the garage. And uh, so he was using that. Uh, doesn't have room for it in his dorm room now, obviously. Uh, so, uh, but they do have uh, they do have a lot of equipment at his, at his college. He goes to Drexel University in Philly. Uh, and they have a Very really cool. strong uh, applied design program and, and great labs and everything. So he can make stuff there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's for sure. awesome. Well, Jay, as uh, Aaron mentioned, and we've talked about ThreadX, and we're excited to have you there, honestly, just because everything you have is so you know compelling for us. And I, I mean, hey, obviously, it's compelling for everybody, considering we've got like the the arborists in for, <laughs> for <laughs> your next. Yeah, I'm just gonna use right all. Here. I'm gonna use all tree examples if that's cool. Is that gonna work for you? Guys? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, just fine. Just go ahead. Yeah. Examples it's going. It's all applicable. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> we love your. We love that you're coming to ThreadX, but you're presenting the opening keynote. Up yeah. here on twenty uh, February twenty fourth, entitled, yeah. and I love this book title also. Uh, Hug your haters: mm -hmm. How to embrace complaints and keep your customers. Yep, uh, love that title. Uh, what do you hope the audience comes away with after your presentation? Every single person at ThreadX has had a circumstance where customers were disappointed or unhappy, and especially because of the nature of this community and the size of most of these organizations, which are not massive, some bigger than others, obviously. But mm -hmm. when when somebody has an issue with your work, especially a, a, a company, an organization like this, where, you know, there is some measure of craft to this, right? You are you are making a thing. It's not like my business where people just pay me for ideas. You guys are making stuff. And, and when somebody says, I don't like the thing you made, that feels like somebody is telling you that your baby is ugly. <laughs> it does. And nobody it wants does. to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that, even if they know for sure their baby is ugly, right? Like yeah. you see it on Facebook all the time. Somebody posts a picture of their baby, you're like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> some kind of a creature, um, but everybody's still like, that's the cutest baby ever. I'm like, it's not, but yes, we're going to say that. So um, it, when, when, when we are confronted with negativity, the natural human reaction, this is not about this industry. It's a natural human physiological reaction is that, is that we, we take offense. Like our, our ire goes up. It actually, and we talked about this in the book a little bit. It's the exact same chemical reaction in your brain that happens when you're in mortal danger. It's literally the fight or flight response. Yeah. Yeah. And that is why so many business owners and managers don't handle negativity very well. It's like they're bad at business. It's like they're bad people. It's just that their brain goes haywire when somebody complains. So I want to talk about some strategies uh, to deal with that. But even more importantly, to help attendees understand, and this is going to sound controversial, but I mean it and I'll back it up. Mm. Your least happy customers are actually your most important customers. Wow. Cool. That's huge. And like we don't treat them that way. We, we treat them we treat them as like, well, they're not happy, we'll get go get somebody else. But the reality is the most overrated thing in business. And I've been doing this a long mm -hmm. time. I'm deceptively youthful looking. It's the soft lighting. Um, <laughs> the most overrated thing in business is praise. Wow. Feels great. Somebody says, oh, you're amazing. Yeah, sure. I love the shirt. Great hat. Cool hoodie. Whatever the circumstances are. Client's happy. You nailed the logo. That was a tricky uh, setup. You guys are amazing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Makes you feel so good. Yeah. But it doesn't teach you anything. Because for somebody to re-ratify what you already suspect, which is that you are good at your job, is only <laughs> psychologically useful. 
It is not oh, yeah. operationally useful in any way. What makes you a better apparel decorator? What makes you a better business person in general? What makes you a better spouse or parent or friend or volunteer is negative feedback and criticism. That is the Petri dish for improvement. But too often we run toward praise and we run away from criticism. And the reality is we should do the exact opposite. Cool. Wow. I mean, honestly, that's something that I think whenever we're looking at people's reviews online and how people respond, there's always kind of, it's almost a, it's a meme now. The fact that somebody comes on and just blasts that shit customer. Show. And says, Absolute yeah, totally. shit show. Like, let's, horrible. Just, let's throw gas on a fire of our own creation. Oh yeah. And especially what I've seen, and this is okay, coming from businesses that have failed, weren't my businesses, but I was working as, you know, as a designer coming from businesses that have failed. Some of what happened was this concept where they just go, you know what, I'm doing the best job I can. And everybody else who doesn't get that doesn't get us. Right. And they're not part of what we do. So forget them. When really good signal was coming through on that, where it was That's like, it. if you kept watching, there was signal inside of that. Yep. Was there noise? There's always noise. There's always noise, but there was signal where people are saying, okay, you know, I'm hearing that same comment back and forth. I'm hearing the fulfillment problems. I'm hearing that. Yeah. And I think that's awesome. It's awesome that you're out here saying that because a lot of people want to get, I mean, positivity is important, but like you said, psychologically important. Well, there's this, idea that, this idea, Eric, that there are um, one-off complaints or extenuating circumstances yeah. doesn't actually hold water mathematically. I don't want to, mm. I don't want to do the whole talk here, but, well, sure. um, but there's an amazing stat which shows that out of every 100 dissatisfied customers, mm. only five will complain. Wow. And that's across all the different complaint mechanisms, right? That's that's phone, that's email, that's face-to-face, -face, that's fax, that's social, that's Yelp, that's hostage note, like whatever it is. <laughs> five out of 100. Wow. So what that means is that for every person who says, Aaron, I didn't like this. Yeah. On average, 19 other people had the same problem but never said anything to you. They just stopped giving you money. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. So so these people that that we are like, wow, well, how dare they complain? They're actually doing us an enormous favor because the people who complain, the haters in the parlance yes. of the book, the <laughs> haters are not your problem. Yeah. Ignoring them is. Yeah. It, the, what kills companies are the people who are silently unhappy. Right. And, and this happens mm. in the restaurant business all the time. It's, it's actually easier to see it in restaurants. And I've heard this from people. Well, whatever happened to whatever happened to Eric? Eric used to come in for lunch every Tuesday and every Thursday. I haven't yeah. seen Eric yeah. in a while. Yeah. I never saw a complaint from Eric. He didn't have to complain. He's like, you know what? I, I've had enough, you know, mismade Caesars. I'm just not going <laughs> to I'm just not going to come anymore. Yeah. Right. That's what kills businesses. The people who are like, meh, not the yeah. people who are complaining. Yeah. Oh, no, especially people who are just kind of leaning on competency. I'm like, competency is just the barrier to entry. <laughs> Being competent and good at what, every time somebody says that, and that's like an old joke from, I think it's from Chris Rock, yeah. and I, I won't go too off uh, off color on the on the podcast <laughs> or anything, but suffice it to say, the joke was, somebody goes, hey, man, I feed my kids, and it's like, you are supposed to feed your kids. <laughs> right. That's There's right. no medal for feeding your kids. Well, no. in, in apparel decoration, there's no medal for the embroidery not looking terrible or being you know spelled correctly. That's yeah. There's no medal for that, guys. We yeah, just, I ordered that's, I ordered shirts. You guys gave me shirts. What you want a stand innovation for that? Like that's that's <laughs> yeah. You're the shirt guy. Yeah, like... <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's the way it works. What I talk about in uh, in the talk triggers book, which is my book about yeah. word of mouth, is that competency doesn't create conversation. Yeah, yeah, right. It's just absolutely. It's the minimum viable requirement. Like I've never said, hey, uh, Eric, check this out. Uh, if I go over there right now and I uh, flick that switch, the lights are going to go off. The lights are going to go off, right? I mean, it's like, yeah, right. uh -huh. yeah that's how electricity works, man. Like, that's yeah, not man. that's not a thing that that you know you you get credit for. Uh, <laughs> that's the business that that you're in, and and I think you know, sometimes people are like, you know, how come you're not you're not so excited about me, you know, executing what you paid me to do? Totally, totally. All right, Jay. Well, right. this this has been already fantastic in the. 10, 15 minutes that we've had with you here. I can't wait. Plus, I used to live in Scottsdale for a long, long time. I'm from Arizona originally. Uh, so always great. My mom still lives there. My stepmom, ton of my yep. friends, about half cool. the people in my company. So it's like a home game for me. So any excuse to get nice. back. Uh, and the property, the Saguaro, where um, uh, ThreadX is taking place is a really cool uh, hotel in a great part of town. So sure. if you haven't got your tickets yet, definitely do. It's going to be a blast. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, we'll get the link up uh, for the ThreadX event. Yeah, I mean, being in Scottsdale in February, not a bad gale. Sure. <laughs> Especially those of us in the Midwest here that are dealing with some yeah, snow and, actually, and stuff right now. Training started by then? Maybe. Maybe not games. Yeah. I think the following week. Yeah, um, there'll be plenty of baseball people out there, though. So you'll run into them at the. Yeah, to that end, though, just a, just a uh, word to the wise. Um, if you are going to rent a car for ThreadX, do it now. Because in that window of time in Phoenix, late Feb to to um, end of March, rental cars get really tight because of all the spring training stuff. So if you are of the mind to not take a lift and instead rent a car, um, I would uh, get on that. Cool. Cool. Great, great piece of advice. Jay, where can people uh, find mo more about you and, and get in touch with what your your business is all about? Uh, two places. One, our main site uh, for my consulting firm is convinceandconvert.com. We have uh, 3,000 articles for business owners and managers about all things customer experience, customer service, and, and digital marketing convinceandconvert.com. And then my site uh, for what I do as a speaker, podcaster, uh, et cetera, is jbear.com, just like my name. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today. And we really look forward to uh, meeting you face to face in uh, two weeks out in Scottsdale. Thank Thanks, guys. On. I appreciate you. Uh, Terry, get better. Uh, uh, don't, uh, you know, don't, don't get uh, Wally pipped or Lou Gehrig by Eric here. You know how that happens. So. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I've been He's threatened been, for years. <laughs> for years. Yeah, for sure. yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Jay. Have a great day. Yeah, See you later. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye. Awesome. Well, that was great. Good, uh, good talking to Jay there, and uh, very exciting awesome. for uh, what's coming up at uh, at ThreadX in a couple of weeks. So, yeah, definitely uh, get out there and and check that out. Uh, so, there were some comments. Uh, Todd says, uh, "I see Eric Moore as a Cobb salad type of guy." No, no, no Todd, yeah. man, bad yeah. call, Todd. Yeah. Caesar salad guy all the way. So Jay, not only great at business and social media and everything else about marketing, Jay totally right about my salad choice. So uh, he's got the <laughs> he's got the crystal ball out. <laughs> nice, nice. All right. Well, uh, so yeah, Christine Chris is correct. Yes, Christine uh, is, I, is correct. I, I eat the Caesar salads with great frequency. Wonderful. So yes. <laughs> Cool. All right. Why anybody cares? I don't know. But there you go. <laughs> Caesar salad. That's the that's the uh, the takeaway today. <laughs> nice, nice. All right. Well, Eric, let's uh, let's get, touch on a couple of news items here. Like I said, we yeah. wanted to jump right into uh, Jay as he <laughs> he shared with us. Uh, the guy's pretty darn busy. Uh, going to be oh, yeah. in Australia before he goes to Scottsdale. It sounds like I can't so, believe. Uh, yeah, in Mexico, in Australia. Uh, I'm always kind of giving Terry, you know, the business about being the road warrior, but I think uh, Jay Bear might just have him yeah. beat for this month. But uh, in the news, let's go ahead and give everybody a reminder for saying uh, one of our other favorite Jays, aside from Jay Bear, uh, Jay Bissell, <laughs> his new ebook, Your Style Guide, is now available for purchase, and there is only a week left to the get that out that hundred dollar discount using the code Launch. So there's still a, a few one-on-one -on -one consulting slots left as well, available to the first 20 buyers. So head over to tworegularguys.com slash YSG to get, it uh, to get it checked out, to see what's going on. It's powered by the decorators community. So, you know, has our seal of approval. And you guys know Jay, so it's not like he hasn't been on, like you don't <laughs> see him, like you don't see him at the trade shows and that you don't know his awesome work teaching. Well, now have that in your hands digitally and get his ebook. So your style guide on sale now and the discount Yep. Only a week left, guys. So if you want to get on that, this is your time. Nice. Nice. Excellent. All right. Well, then uh, definitely want you guys to check that out. But uh, the other news item that uh, I thought was interesting uh, coming off of the, uh, I don't know if we can say it without getting sued, but coming off of the, the big football game, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. coming off the Super Bowl. I'm kidding about that part. Um, <laughs> so coming off of the, the Super Bowl, there uh, a, a article that I saw said Operation Team a player seized $123 million in fake Super Bowl merchandise. Uh, federal authorities in Miami seized an estimated $123 million worth of counterfeit sports merchandise for teams playing in the Super Bowl. This mm. year's operation is a 400% increase from last year, which resulted in 24 $4.2 million worth of counterfeit sports goods recovered, according to the ICE uh, statement. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're watching. They're out there. They're uh, they're making it happen. So um, this is one of those things that I keep telling everybody, especially everybody knows that I've been kind of championing the prosumer movement of decorators kind of, you know, who are coming in cottage industry and then growing into businesses. And I see them make this mistake a lot. Um Yes, we all know there's kind of like security through obscurity. You think you're not going to get busted because you're a small shop, but watch out for this stuff, guys. NFL, Harley, Disney, just don't touch it. 
yeah. just don't touch it because one day when someone does notice it, or you'll you may even find out that one of your customers will will turn you in for it. People who are shopping around will turn you in for it. There are people who are active kind of Disney fans and Disney police. Uh, you don't really want this to come and be part of what happens to your shop. So yeah, <laughs> be careful. Don't do that NFL stuff. And just don't do knockoffs, guys. I, I I wrote recently, and I don't know, you probably do the same thing as I do, Aaron, about retail research, looking at what's out there. And I wrote about how you do mix-ups and mash-ups, take a little bit from all these things and then do something new. Get inspired, not don't do knockoffs. Yeah, yeah. Christine <laughs> says reason number four hundred and fifty-four not to use anything as a design or decoration if you aren't if you are not sure of the copyright and provenance. So thank you, Christine. And always she always summarizes everything perfectly. She she is the official unofficial writer. Um, <laughs> in fact, we have to send her her paycheck. Oh wait, there are no paychecks. So. Yeah, yeah. No, that, Sorry, that, Eric, that I forgot. That's <laughs> uh, <laughs> however, what I'm going to go one more comment that came in just because somebody has asked, and we're going to talk about it at the end of the show. Yeah. Uh, Heidi says, uh, "Eric, are you going to do on any online courses?" Well, funny you should ask. Powered by Decorators Community, I am also yeah. going to be doing an online course coming up next month. So uh, keep watching for that. And yes, indeed, th there'll be some online courses with with me as well. So at the awesome. end of the show, we'll have more info on that. Perfect. Perfect. And uh, Travis, thank you very much. I, uh, you know, we're, we're talking, we're talking financial planning and, and uh, you know, so I had to step up my game and um, I, I still have my two regular guys shirt underneath it. So we're good. We're good. All right, you guys. Um, well, you know, so one of the things that we talked about doing for 2020 and, mm -hmm. and I know uh, Christine, this is where you turn off the, the volume for a moment. Cause this is the groaning part of the show. Uh, we have to have our dad jokes, you know? So yeah. um, being, being the dad of an eight year old, I have a wealth of opportunities to, uh, to tell some, some dad jokes. So um, here, here's my dad joke that I got from my son for this week. A, uh, a dad bod is a solid father figure. Okay, so let the groaning begin. Oh, that um, hurts. <laughs> it stings, people. Now, um, <laughs> as uh, as the fact that we've been doing these dad jokes a little more regularly here on Two Regular sure, Guys, sure. Um, I think I've been linked to dad jokes now. And a friend of the show, Reggie, many time Reggie Award winner, Lisa mm -hmm. Shaw, actually shared a dad joke with me on Facebook. And I'm actually going to put this up on screen for you all. And I'll read it too, because it's a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so a father says to a son, I don't trust those trees, son. The son says, what? Why not? The dad says, they seem kind of shady. Oh, God, I'm going to groan for you guys. <laughs> it's so horrible. But I can't say anything because now I actually link, speaking of a friend of the show, Lisa Shaw, I link her in on horrible groaner jokes because I now have, for some reason, this industry has a small subset of people which you guys all like dad jokes and groaners. Uh, <laughs> Another person who's been on many shows with me before, Brendan Prasner, who's over at Wellcom. He's a groaner joke person. Lisa Shaw, uh, Jay Fishman, digitizing guru, guy who's been at it for a long time at Wicked Stitch of the East. You guys all, I started to just go ahead and message you all and link you together on this stuff because I want you to go ahead and just start your own group so you can groan each other out <laughs> instead of making the rest exactly. of us go through exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, all right. Um, good stuff. Well, Eric, uh, I'm going to sure. steal from you here so you can all right, go uh, for it, do your thing in the background there but uh so eric before we dive in i do want to thank everybody for checking out the two regular guys podcast and if you're listening to the podcast version version we'd appreciate it if you'd share this with a friend or another co-worker or family or, or whoever your dog <laughs> any listeners we love we want everybody to become regulators and uh, so we appreciate uh, our regulars plus we'd uh, appreciate it if you gave us a review on apple Podcasts, stitcher or wherever you're listening to these podcasts at uh, we're always looking for new guests. So uh, if you or anyone you know would like to join us or have a good topic, uh, please make sure you head over to Calendly.com slash two regular guys. That's C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y dot com slash the number two regular guys uh, with any of your show ideas or you can contact us through our website. If you are watching us live, we've already have plenty of uh, great comments going. So keep those comments coming. Jump in, reach out to your industry friends right now and tell them that uh, the two regular guys is happening. And we are about to get into talking some financial planning and uh, road mapping to uh, success. But we need to hear a word from our sponsors real quick, Eric, and then we will jump in. What is Impressions Expo? 
Impressions Expo, formerly known as ISS, is the premier trade show dedicated to the imprinted and decorated apparel industry. They have five shows that are produced annually in each region of the United States, including Long Beach, California, Atlantic City, New Jersey, Orlando, Florida, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and cap off the year at Fort Worth, Texas. Each of those five annual shows also feature over 30 seminars and hands-on workshops in categories such as screen printing, embroidery, digitizing, digital decorating, and much, much more. Visit ImpressionsExpo.com for more details. And while there, use the promo code REGULARGUYSIE for a free expo pass. Again, make sure you visit ImpressionsExpo.com to get more details. And the two regular guys look forward to seeing you there. All right. Well, thanks again to the Impressions Expo. Uh, they had a fantastic Long Beach event and uh, some other great events coming up. So make sure you uh, use that uh, promo code so they know that uh, you found it from two regular guys. And anybody over there in Impressions, just tell them you heard about them on uh, two regular guys. We'd much appreciate that. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, um, we are getting close to our interview, but uh, Michael just uh, dropped out. So I'm not sure if he's yes, having some he internet did. issues over there. So uh, let's, uh, oh, we could tell more. Moment. Here, he's coming back and getting. getting <laughs> He's still getting there. ready, guys. This is still live podcasting. What I am going to do, let me bring up a couple comments while Michael gets his, his setup uh, finished here. Uh, what I hate to say is that everybody's just talking about dad jokes. Number one, Todd Downing, what I love this. Uh, I love this. Todd is a big champion of the dad jokes. We have everybody jumping in. Uh, so Aaron dad jokes now getting hashtag James Orlani. Yes. Thank you, James. Hashtag like Aaron hashtag. dad jokes. That's going on right now. And here's the thing. Christine, she poor Christine. <laughs> oh, well, now we're doomed. There will be dad jokes <laughs> on this podcast forever. Christine, like there weren't already bad jokes on this podcast pretty much for the entire time we've been on. And so I have to get back to the, the uh, Todd cheering section for the dad jokes. Yeah. Not doomed. All right. Cultured. So there culture. we are. Uh, we are, nice. we are, of course, men of culture. So nice. now we've got right. Michael back. <laughs> all right. Let's, yeah, let's dive in here. Uh, we want to get to all these uh, good, this great information. So Michael entered his financial services career with American Express Financial Advisors in 1999 in St. Louis County. Uh, it was there he developed his skills as a financial planner. In 2000, he enjoyed early career success, achieving honors and awards associated with his status as a top 100 news advisor in the country. Michael moved into a regional leadership role uh, with American Express Financial Advisors in early 2001, where he recruited, trained, and mentored new advisors in the firm while still working with existing clients and growing his practice. Uh, he was in this role for three years before re returning to focus on his personal financial planning practice full-time in uh, 2003. In 2014, he joined Money Concepts, where he continues to help individuals, families, and small business owners plan and prepare to accomplish their dreams and goals. So welcome into the program, Michael. Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, we doing are doing good. great. It's been a good morning already, but it's going to get even better with the awesome information you're going to bring us. So uh, let's dive like right on into this. Um, when you encourage someone to roadmap their way to business success, like what do you mean by that? Is business planning kind of the major key here or do you see another missing ingredient that we're just not catching on to? Well, I think uh, yeah, there is a, a roadmap that uh, many business owners will start, and that certainly is with a good business plan. Uh, actually, a lot of business owners skip this part. Um, <laughs> <let's> yes. <be. laughs> so I'm sure a lot of your listeners uh, dove right in and you know found that they were successful without that that type of roadmap. But when I when I speak of a roadmap. Uh, to business owners, I'm, I'm really talking about the big picture, not only the business, but the business owner themselves. You know, we're in, we do business uh, to hopefully, uh, you know, provide value and uh, hopefully we enjoy those things. But uh, a lot of business owners forget to think about themselves. So yeah. when, when you, when you're, if you're really going to truly roadmap um, a business plan, a business success plan. It's going to include your own, your own uh, goals and dreams uh, for yourself and your family, I would assume as well. 
So it's not just about the business. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that, that's, yeah. I mean, that's, that makes a lot of sense. Like you said, I think a lot of people skip that first part, but then mm-hmm. once, you know, they do dive in and they do a business plan that they're really focused on, on the business. But uh, I love that you're, you're bringing them back to the reality of it that, you know, we, uh, how's that saying? Oh, we, we, uh, we don't live to work. We work to live. Mm-hmm. Is that uh, <laughs> kind of? Yes. Long? Yes. Yeah. And it's easy. It's easy. I will say for a business owner to, uh, just get in and start to grind and work to uh, certainly in the early stages, right? It's, it's about putting up a lot of sacrifice and, and, yep. you know, stretching yourself, working overtime, working weekends. What, you know, we do those things as small business owners sure. and, and you have a lot, a lot of times you have to do that when you, when you get going, but, uh, you know, I, I want to help people under, you know, understand that they can't neglect themselves. They can't neglect really their, their personal goals. And what, what is this work all about? It's more than that job. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. That's great. So, so Michael, you know, you work with a pretty diverse group of, of people in, in, in your practice, your whatnot. And, you know, I know you've done work with financial benefits and, and veterans, but then you're working with individuals and, and, and across the board there really, but, you know, so when you're working with a small business though, what's, what are you seeing a, a stumbling blocks? You know, what, what do they trip up on? I think right. may have temporarily lost Michael yep, there. Yep. I think Michael <laughs> may have frozen for just a moment there. That's the fun of the internet there. So <laughs> I didn't think, yeah. So I was hoping my question wasn't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was that controversial. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. We'll pop Michael out for a second. For, for uh, just one moment. We'll, uh, so see well, if- honestly, we already started with something really great here. And that's uh, the fact that we're talking about, you know, business planning being more than just that business aspect. Sure. But, you know, honestly, I'd love to get back into those stumbling blocks. Let's go ahead and there we bring go. Michael back in. <laughs> hey, there we go. Got you back, Michael. So, <laughs> hey guys, uh, don't you don't you love technology issues? I wish I could say it was your fault, but I think it's more <laughs> my, my I'm sure somehow it is. In. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so All Michael, right. what I was asking though is, where do you see small businesses stumble when it comes to you know this roadmap to success and their financial plans? Well, uh, a lot of times it's really not setting um, a part of their work week to work on the business. It goes back to, you know, you know the grind and it goes back to, uh, you know, work, work, work and, you know, set these goals and you've got to you've got to accomplish all these goals and uh, for the business itself. But you're really you're really actively in the business and not focused uh, on, you know, the big picture. So it goes back to the, the old saying, uh, you got to work on the business, not necessarily in the business at times. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, like, yeah. I think often, especially apparel decorators who we're talking to here, we get really hooked up on how many pieces are we putting out? You know, what are we doing in production? And people do forget there. I mean, the, uh, admittedly, it seems like a joke because I've got the uh, fake machines behind me. This is my old shop that I used to work in and I've got it up as a green screen. But yeah. we do. We end up living back here and we forget to work at our businesses or on the business instead of just in it and grinding, especially like solo entrepreneurs and people who are at smaller businesses. So, But with that, I mean, sort of talking about small business, when it comes to the financial bl- planning part of this, when you're working with a small business, What's the first thing you look at with them and how is that different from other kinds of clients you would work with? The first thing I work, uh, that I look at uh, typically is the business owner, owner capitalized sufficiently to make uh, that business uh, independent, right? Mm. Of their personal financial picture. And I understand sometimes that's, that's just not possible. Uh, uh, especially as you get going, um, you know, you're, you're going to maybe, you know, I've certainly people, uh, I've seen people and great success stories start their, their, uh, their business on a credit line from their credit card. Uh, I mm. have, I have a particular client. That's how he started his business with a, uh, $10,000, you know, credit card. And that's how, that's how he launched his business using credit. Uh, he runs a multi-million dollar company now. And you love to see those success stories, but so many times the uh, 
the business is not capitalized sufficiently. So when there is a, a lean month or a mm. lean quarter, uh, the, the, I see them robbing from themselves to support that business. And uh, too often that's to their detriment. Yeah. So uh, it really goes back to, uh, you know, making sure that you can run this business uh, independent of your own, uh, too much of your own financial capital. Okay. All right. So to you know, keep making sure that you're, you're capitalized and, and doing that the right way. That's, that's great, Michael. And also if you, you wouldn't mind if uh, just speak up for us a little bit more too. Uh, some of the listeners are having a, a little bit hard time hearing you just, just uh, FYI for you there, but um, yeah, <laughs> always good. We'll get you in there a little bit closer. So yeah, sorry about that. Um, all right. So <laughs> <laughs> Michael, within this roadmap structure that we mentioned, uh, what types of activities can give the small businesses out there listening to our program, we call them the regulators, the, the most bang for their buck? Oh, now, yep. now we've... Yeah, we've lost them entirely, sir. Lost them. Shoot. <laughs> the technology piece is... Yeah, so we're going yep, to we drop him for one quick second here. Yeah. And, we'll drop uh, them out for a second. You know, we actually have some good comments we can talk about real quickly yeah, while we're sure. here. We've got Christine who is talking about, we're talking about the financing about this. We have uh, Christine here. Uh, that's a good question. A lot of small business owners tend to treat all the finances as one lump sum. You have to make sure that you can support yourself regardless of what the business does. And yeah, I, I can't agree more, Christine. I've got some people who I've dealt with where they are just absolutely mortgaged to the hilt. And uh, when I'm consulting with them, I say, you know, they have to have enough money to also run the business. There's operating capital. It has to be there so you can, yeah. you know, get blanks, get the things you need. Totally. And uh, I'd love this comment from Jeff. Yeah, I know I've got the machines up behind me, guys. I keep <laughs> waiting for them to all start while uh, Eric is trying to work. Yeah, green it's not real. <laughs> it's all green screen magic, guys. This is my old shop. This is not where I am now, but, you know, yeah. I have to just represent embroidery while I'm here. <laughs> nice. Okay. Well, let, let's see if we can uh, try try Michael back here and, and uh, see. Michael, let's see if we've got you back here. So uh, what I was asking is, you know, within this structure that we're talking about here, road mapping our way to success, what, what's what's the most bang for the buck that a small business can get? What What things should they be thinking about and working on here? Well, I, I think I think it comes down to uh, making sure that you do have uh, that you revisit the business plan, and if you don't have one, uh, you know, make it make it a quick five-page business plan. Uh, any business plan should include a marketing plan, right? Okay. And uh, then I've I've been focused here, as as you can probably tell, on the business owner themselves. So I think a good roadmap to success will include tying together your business plan. Which is which is which is certainly about the business, the marketing plan, which is about the customer, the client, or the end user, and then the the you, your plan, your personal financial plan is about you and your family and where you want to go. So, if if a business owner really wants to uh, right out of the gates uh, have a a mindset to pay themselves, so to speak, uh, yeah. pay themselves if they can, not last, but first, <laughs> okay. uh, why not, you know, I'm sure a lot of your listeners, once they get big enough, they're, they're thinking they're going to start to put away money towards their retirement again, or maybe, maybe they, you know, some of your business owners are in, you know, mid life cycle of their business, having plenty of success. And they're trying to figure out, you know, what type of retirement plan to set up for the business. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, I just encourage you to do so, you know, start to develop a plan, start to build in your week, possibly where you work on the business and you don't forget your personal goals here. You have your business goals, but you have personal goals as well. And uh, a lot of times they're going to be very, very different, of course. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, that makes a lot of, a lot of sense where you're, you're talking about, you know, we, we do, we get so focused in on that, that hustle and, and the, the day-to-day -day grind and that we forget, you know, what, what that long-term goal is of 
hey, you know, what are you going to do when you retire? Yeah, you, you're just going to work and work to the grave, or, or is there some purpose that you're <laughs> you've got going here? So that that's great. Um, so apparently, you definitely see that quite a bit with uh, with your clients, where they 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 need that uh, reminder. I I do, Aaron, and, and you know, I'll add to it. You know, for even those that uh, work, you know, for somebody else, you know. Um, they neglect their own goals and they go to work and come home and they, obviously life goes on and you've got kids and you've got travel and activities and, you know, to do's and, and you get, you know, you get those all done and you go to sleep and you get up and you do it again. Uh, so <laughs> everybody is guilty of really not planning probably uh, to, uh, for their future, you know, for their, for their retirement when they're not working. You know, what does that look like? Having having a vision for that. Uh, yeah. So, you know, business owner ha is going is to spend a lot of time, you know, being a visionary for their business. Uh, but again, it, it, I see so much where they're neglecting, uh, including themselves in that vision. You know, what is their exit plan as an example? Who's going to take over the business uh, mm. towards the end of, the, of, of their you know, they're working years, they're getting older, who, who can they hand the business off to? Uh, so that business continues maybe to pay that original business owner. Mm. A, you know, that would be nice, huh? Step away <laughs> from, from the business and still collect a check. Yeah, wouldn't it? But you got to trust that you got to trust the person that you're handing it off to. Oh yeah, no so, doubt. I mean, with all with all that kind of taken into account, you know, people actually starting to think about, say, their personal retirement. They're thinking about uh, their exit strategy, and not always just sales, but yeah, you because know, a lot of people say, "Hey, when's the first time to start thinking about selling your businesses when you build it?" Uh, and that's that. Honestly, I think that's something people don't think about either. Either who you're handing it off to, you can either do that strategy or sell it. But I think there really is something to the idea of this thing that keeps paying dividends to you or having it managed somehow. But when someone's doing all that correctly, like how do you, how do they take steps to both kind of keep their roadmap on track for business success while they are kind of protecting those needs that are personal, kind of getting themselves ready for what that personal life looks like, what that end stage looks like? Well, there's a couple of thoughts here. Uh, I'll hopefully uh, not go down a rabbit hole, but uh, one of the things in terms of protection that, uh, or, or terms of, in, in terms of just uh, maximizing opportunities in the tax code. A lot of times I will see business owners uh, uh, just be self-employed. They'll, they'll just file self-employed. Uh, mm. They do not file as an LLC or an S Corp. Uh, so a lot of your business owners might be just doing, they have a doing business as, as they have a, a, a an mm. company name, but it's really just them. And whatever they make goes, goes right on the front page of the 1040. Well, uh, what I'm saying here is why not form an LLC and separate that mm -hmm. entity, right, from your per personal finance. That's wise to do uh, from a liability standpoint. And it's certainly wise to do from a tax standpoint because there is a lot of business deductions uh, that, that you would be able to begin to, to capture and take a look at. So that's one way to protect their their personal interests. Uh, you know, the second way uh, here is is to you know is is to really it goes back to the the planning. Have a plan and revisit your plan uh, at di different uh, milestone markers. Okay, mm -hmm. so it might be where you just you just assess it on a quarterly basis your your business. Uh, so you might have a goal that you want to start paying yourself, but you just don't see it in the budget right now, the business budget. So, uh, when I say pr protect your personal interests, that mm -hmm. means your business to pay you and it, and what pay you a savings rate, not a spend, not a spending check, right? But a savings check. So there's a lot of business owners that just take enough out of the business just to meet the bills, right? Yeah. So protecting your protecting your future is truly developing a savings plan that goes into your future, right? Creating a bucket of money somehow, somewhere. It could be officially in a retirement plan. 
maybe it's in a separate checking account, a separate savings account that you do not have online access to. It's not linked to your primary checking account or your business account. So you have to actually take money and or deposit it manually into that bank. <laughs> and without online access, it's going to be really hard to go get the money, right? Yeah. At least you're going to have to think about it. <laughs> it's so, one way to reinforce that so, self-control, right? Yeah. yeah. I, it, again, it, it's, uh, you know, we're human. We're human. And, and believe me, when I open my screen and I see three bank accounts, accounts all tied together, and I can click button and, you know, just move money like that. Um, you know, it, it certainly makes it easy from uh, to rob from myself, so to speak, or to rob from my future. Yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. I mean, that, that makes, makes a ton of sense. And, and like you said, we're, we're, we're human, you know, so <laughs> if it is easy to go, Oh yeah, I, I don't, I'll just grab that. And, uh, but like I said, if, if, if you actually have to, you know, get in the car, go stand in line at the bank, you know, all those kinds of fun things, it's, uh, it makes you think about it a little bit more. So that's a, that's a great piece of advice for sure there, Michael. So Michael, what, what, what else, what, what other nuggets do you, you want to leave our audience with here? You know, so they make sure that they have a, a roadmap for, for success, not, not only in their business, but again, their personal goals, you know, so how do we tie all the information that you've given us here today together? I guess I, I would say in, in conclusion on this concert that, uh, it is about uh, having a focus, and that's 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 hard to do at times, and that's why um, I think it's good to schedule time to work on the business uh, every week. You know, it might be a Friday morning where, uh, and your listeners here are taking away uh, from their bit running their business to listen to this podcast, and yeah. uh, kudos to your listeners because they are working on the business today. Mm -hmm. And they're not in the business right now. They're not out there making money. They're right here and, uh, you know, looking at resources to help them, uh, you know, continue to do that and, it, and do that more if you can. Every mm -hmm. week, set aside some time to look at business and project when you can begin to start to save for your own retirement, whatever that looks like. All right. Retirement is, means different things to different people. And for some of your listeners, uh, I would imagine uh, they might never retire. You know, they enjoy their work and they're, they, they can do it maybe part time. That's great. But, you know, so much so many times, you know, when you think about retirement, it, it really is more than just stopping work. Uh, it, it's about providing a legacy for, uh, you know, providing a legacy you know, an estate plan, mm -hmm. if you will, but leaving a legacy, uh, mm -hmm. pouring into somebody's life, maybe doing, maybe doing charitable work, maybe back somehow, uh, maybe starting a new uh, hobby, maybe uh, picking up, uh, you know, how to play drums. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's goals that people have that mm -hmm. they want. A lot of times they'll happen in retirement. I challenge you to start to think about those today and maybe how you can you know tie this all together and you know on a on a weekly basis or a quarterly basis sit down and think about some of the key goals that you have for you, for yourself and your family and of course how that relates to the business how do you see the business helping you accomplish that goal uh so it is it is about paying yourself it is about paying attention to yourself mm. and it's it's about you know doing the doing the right thing for yourself. Don't don't sacrifice you, okay? So that's awesome. I'm a, man. Yeah. I'm a financial planner, and you probably tell that um, <laughs> you know you, you have to you have to know where you're going to go. Yeah, so that's awesome. Get, get written down <laughs> and revisit your plan on a regular basis. Awesome. Because things that's change, great, right? Man. Life yep. happens. Life changes. So uh, any plan should be modifiable. Well, man, that's excellent information. And honestly, I think even if it's just a wake up call to people to start thinking that way, that's almost enough. But we would love for people to be able to get a hold of you. So how can people contact you, get in touch, and how can they solicit your services? 
Well, I think I heard you. Uh, how do people solicit my services? Or reach out to me. Sure. Yeah. How do they get in touch with you? Yeah. <laughs> that uh, is that. Device? Well. Yeah. Uh, yep. Exactly. At, uh, at, you can reach me at my website through my website, and that's in. It's Michael Momino forward slash money concepts, or or money concepts forward slash uh, uh, Michael Momino. <laughs> Let me get that right. And uh, <laughs> certainly you can reach me via email and that's mmomino at moneyconcepts.com. Uh, Excellent. Awesome. So hopefully you can share that, some of that information with your listeners. Absolutely. And feel free to reach out just to, to discuss. Yeah, no, that's that's just great, Michael. We cheerleader. I'll be your cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> he, he is actually he's a great great guy uh michael and and i actually uh share a co-working location too so i've had an opportunity to talk to him lots and he is a fantastic cheerleader <laughs> awesome okay michael well, well we'll, we'll get all that information out there for for yeah. people great information and uh we will talk to you soon talk to you then, sir Cool. All right. That was great having Michael on, you know, uh, very interesting information. And honestly, wow, the, the chat guys, if you're not in on the live commentary on Facebook or on uh, YouTube, you are missing out. There's so much great stuff here. Um, sure. I, Christine's been killing it. And I love, I just love this last one she put up in here to reiterate a great point from Michael. Uh, don't sacrifice you. Such good advice. Definitely something that a lot of business owners struggle with, devoting everything to business at the expense of the personal life and mental health. Uh, yes. We, we, we often do that and it's great to reiterate that and also as part of the business plan. So uh, awesome stuff. And one more from Jay Bissell, whose book we talked about earlier. Uh, are you the same person today as when you you started your business? Neither is your business. You both need to grow, evolve, adapt, shift, and change. Build that into the quarterly and yearly checkups and that includes your branding. Somebody beating that branding drum, Jay, as usual. <laughs> Just, I mean, there's so many comments we couldn't get to all of them, but did you have any favorite stuff you wanted to bring up, Aaron? Uh, yeah, there, there there were a ton of great comments here. Uh, I'm just kind of checking them all as we go along here, but much of my life has been, quote unquote, just someday right. I'm actually learning to change, watching my daughter attain her goals. So awesome. there you go. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, we can learn a lot from our kids. That's a great point, Sandy. Um, I know that uh, having that, that kid-like, uh, you know, asking why all the time and, oh, yeah. uh, you know, never giving up, you know, if I want if I want that candy bar, I'm going to make my parents' life a living hell until I get it. You know, if, well, you, if know, you want something, get, get out there and ask for it over and over again until you get it. <laughs> you know, since I love this whole concept of someday, I'm going to bring up one more from uh, Marshall Atkinson, friend of the show. Uh, yep. Plenty of people don't have a plan to achieve their dreams. It's always someday. Start with the goal and work backward with key benchmarks on how to get there. And certainly uh, we got that from Michael as well, talking about those quarterly kind of reviews or even weekly reviews. But um, certainly Marshall has a point there. It's actionable steps. It's something I actually, I recently did some teaching on this for people who are starting like kind of the prosumer space again, the small businesses. And I'm like, goals are great. Goals are fantastic, but goals aren't actionable steps. Actionable steps come first or have to be part of that goal attainment, you know? So very cool to see that going on. Once again, regulators just killing it today. Yeah, for sure. As per usual. As, as per usual. Yeah, for sure. All right, Eric. Well, let's let's take a quick break here. Let's hear a word from uh, our sponsor, uh, Ace Transfer Company, and then we will come back and wrap it up. Looking to grow your Have you been looking to grow your business or start one in the garment decoration industry? After all, that's why you're listening, right? Ace Transfer Company is located in Springfield, Ohio, and we've provided our customers with high-quality transfers, competitive prices, and great customer service for nearly 30 years. Ace Transfer Company offers a wide variety of garment decoration services, including screen-printed transfers, contract screen printing, direct-to-garment or DTG, dye sublimation, signs, banners, heat transfer vinyl, pressure-sensitive vinyl, and more. Use your own designs or have our in-house artists assist you in creating eye-catching transfers. At ACE, we are dedicated to helping your business succeed, so print your vision at ACE. For more information, visit our website, acetransfercompany.com. Send us an email at acetransco at gmail.com. That's A-C-E-T-R-A-N-S-C-O at gmail. Or give us a call at 800-525-3126. 
Excellent. All right. Well, thanks very much to uh, Ace Transfer Company for their support of the show. And uh, yeah, it, it, great stuff over there. So we we appreciate everything that they've done and, and uh, appreciate all of our sponsors and, and whatnot and all of the people that are supporting us here. So um, let's see here. Let's make Absolutely. sure we catch a couple more comments here. Yes. Before uh, Marshall says, my new motto this year is ROI, return on intent. I like it. I like um, it very much. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's always saying, what's the ROI of what we're doing? And they mean return on investment, but I like this idea return on any tent. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, In fact, it's I took a tip up. from uh, Todd Downing as over at his Tuesdays with yeah. Todd. Yeah. And I am uh, actually doing a uh, time audit, trying to figure out right. what it is that, uh, you know, so I set my intent and then I've got uh, writing down exactly what I do all day and, and uh, then going, huh. I really spent way too much time on cat videos today. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had that very, very thing recently. I realized that for me, uh, I, I am someone who gets to be reactive, not proactive. And it's something to think about. Uh, as things come in, I want to help somebody with problems. I will start devoting myself to the latest thing that comes in instead of the things that are you know, top of my goal list. So yeah. definitely something to think about. But seriously, I love shiny that. Shiny objects, Eric. Shiny, shiny objects. <laughs> shiny objects are hard, especially when behind the shiny object is a person who really needs something. That's, yeah. uh, that's a tough thing for a lot of us who yeah. are kind of helpers in this industry. And I yeah. know a lot, of people, a lot of our regulators are definitely there. Yeah, for sure. Um, one, one other comment before we get sure. into a couple other things. And, and just, just this is of note because, you know, we talk about snow and, and, and having seven inches of snow. <laughs> but uh, Cindy here said, says, hey, I forgot to tell y'all, we had seven inches of snow Wednesday. So if uh, the y'all doesn't tell you where she's from, um, <laughs> she's in Texas. So that's that's a little uncommon down there in Texas to have that yeah. much snow. Uh, uh, now, so. I may live in the mountains here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, but I mean, it was like 17 to 20 degrees low recently we were freezing real well so uh we felt that texas we were here we got snow yeah. as well so nice. uh i'm i'm not gonna let's say this i won't not be looking forward to scottsdale let's uh <laughs> <laughs> i'm definitely thinking that thread x sounds a lot nicer than it did before it started getting cold yet yeah more time. yeah even though terry's sick he's in scottsdale so you can't feel that bad for him so <laughs> no, this is true. He's, not, he's not cold. He's doing fine. I mean, everybody's like, oh, New Mexico, but no, Scottsdale, they have that. That's where it's at. Yeah. And uh, sure. one more time, I'm going to grab Christine. One more comment from Christine before we get moving. Uh, people who are inclined to help also have to learn to protect their time. Yes, everybody. Amen. Uh, I love helping too, but it's easy to get sucked into that and neglect your goals and time requirements. Uh, yeah, I need to just go ahead and paste this one up on my wall. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Print it out. I forgot that I'm one of the people I need to help some days. Yeah, uh, but true. yeah, that's uh, so true, guys. Well, speaking of helping, Eric, uh, what do you have coming up here on, on the list? <laughs> Can you feel that segue, people? All right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. What I have coming up here is the Demystifying Next Level Digitizing webinar. And that's coming up March 28th, 2020. And this is actually one of my most popular classes from the floor of actually the DAX trade shows, where this came from. We were talking about that again. Uh, but we're teaching it online. So finally, everybody says, why, why can't I ever get this education you do at the trade shows online? Well, you can this year, first time ever through the decorators community. Uh, better running, bolder, more beautiful embroidery with a faster cycle from concept to completion. That is the thing we're trying to give you. And we're getting details and bonus content out. I know that this exists because I made some bonus content. So yeah, I know it, we're ready to start sending that out. <laughs> but uh, if you want to learn more about it, I'm going to go ahead and paste this in. It's erichamel.com slash demystifying digitizing webinar. It is in the comments. You can get it now. And when we get to this class, you're going to have about three hours of me just giving you a data dump of all the stuff that we need to do. There's three sections. It's We're getting into the, the surface of embroidery. We're getting into what makes it interesting and high value. And then we're getting into what I like to call the scientific stitcher. And that is how you're going to get those quick cycles of figuring things out, sampling, and fixing problems so that you get quicker and better when you are testing normal embroidery and when you're developing new techniques. So uh, demystifying digitizing webinar coming up and should be fun to have people from all over the country and anywhere joining in online. And then the next thing, since I talked about it earlier already, uh, DAX Kansas City is coming up very soon, almost <laughs> a little too soon for some of us. Yeah. Uh, and I'll be teaching uh, debating digitizing, expert answers for the digitizing curious, where I kind of run you through if you want to bring digitizing in-house, if you're curious about doing it or want to know how that's going to be. I'll walk you through the pros and cons, how to do it, um, a little bit about developing an eye for embroidery, and then a little bit about how to digitize safely for years and not wreck yourself with RSI. And I know a little bit about that. Uh, and the last uh, class I'm teaching is treatments and digitizing techniques for specialty threads. So 
thick threads, metallics, thin threads, the kind of stuff that makes special effects and uh, helps you run faster. I'm going to teach everybody a little bit about that at DAX Kansas City. Cool. That's what I've got going on. And, nice. Uh, and then uh, what about uh, this afternoon? Something coming up? Uh, this afternoon, I didn't even mention this because I was not trying to steal the thunder from the show, but I actually have started my own little live streaming and that's uh, Fridays with Eric. So if you haven't checked that out before, I don't think I don't have a link ready or anything, uh, <laughs> but it is on my YouTube channel. It is going to be here on Facebook as well. I've been doing just a streaming thing. It's 2.30 Mountain Time. I don't even have the rest of the time zones <laughs> figured out in my head yet. That's this will be the second show. 3.30 Central and there you go. There you uh, go. 4 Eastern <laughs> and 1.30 on Pacific. <laughs> Pacific time there. I got it. <laughs> I have no sense of time, but yeah, uh, Fridays with Eric is going to be essentially me talking about all the stuff I don't get to talk about most other days. It's a lot of going deep on embroidery stuff, certainly. But as uh, Todd Downing, who who very nicely christened me Batman, knows, I live a double life. You'll so you'll be getting some e-commerce, some marketing, some other business and branding stuff as well. So today, two thirty, it's going to be about um, my publications that I have out in print wear and images this month. So we have some stuff about getting inspired by uh, retail research. And we have some, uh, you know, there's just all kinds of other things going on, but I don't want to take any more time. If you guys want to tune in, get on my YouTube channel, uh, get on Facebook and you'll be able to talk to me live uh, in front of the old green screen. Uh, <laughs> and I see Aaron's put up a comment from Todd. Uh, Fridays with E Rich has a better ring. <sighs> uh, Terry's sick and he's still here in spirit. As yep, always. that's right. He's still <laughs> giving you a hard time in spirit. So good stuff. Awesome, Eric. Well, thank you for sharing that. And uh, yeah, thank everybody you, get there and and check that out. Um, Terry has got yes. some things upcoming here uh, next week, I believe, right after Valentine's Day. So maybe you can uh, get a Valentine's Day date with him on the night before and then <laughs> uh, show up at Atlas Screen Supply in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, for his uh, complete screen printing business course, February 15th through the 16th. And uh, then he will be uh, right there in his hometown of Phoenix, Arizona, there uh, at Workhorse Products on February 29th through March 1st, teaching that same complete screen printing business course. Uh, he will be out at Dax, Kansas City with us, and he's presenting a uh, seminar there called uh, On Being a Great, all caps, Great Screen Printer. And that's happening on Saturday, February 22nd at uh, 1020 in the morning there at Dax, Kansas City. Let's make sure you sign up for that. Uh, and then uh, ThreadX, which we've talked about with Jay earlier, uh, is yeah. happening February 23rd through the 25th, and uh, we are going to be out there. Uh, doing uh, live on air stuff and interviewing guests and uh, recording stuff. And so ThreadX 2020 powered by SGA uh, happening right in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, where uh, Terry lives there. Um, and you can find all of his upcoming classes and, and events and happenings and uh, personal phone number, whatever, I believe. Uh, <laughs> I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what the personal phone number thing, but uh, <laughs> right at terrycombs.com. So uh definitely uh, go over and check that out, terrycombs.com, and find oh, the sure. tab tour dates. So um, for me, uh, what are you doing, man? Our success group is uh, is rocking and rolling. So it's oursuccessgroup.com is where you go to check that out. Uh, we just wrapped up the five keys uh, series. And uh, so th that, that live series is uh, is over now and great fanfare and a great time that was had. Uh, those still are available, though. If you'd like to go get those training opportunities, you can uh, watch them after the fact and, and still get all of the great information. So that is available over at oursuccessgroup.com. Uh, nice. Plus we're starting monthly and annual memberships uh, to future training. In fact, on February 19th, uh, Todd and I, Todd leading the charge here, Todd Downing, leading the charge with uh, a, a basically an in-depth walkthrough of Facebook ads from starting nice. up your ads account on into creating audiences and, and creating ads and, and, and the, you, know, you talked about the scientific stitcher, Eric, the, the science side of, you know, I, I like to call it scientific way of looking at how these ads yeah. are performing. So, you know, you're not wasting a bunch of money going, Oh, the Facebook ads don't work. Well, they do work. You just have to find <laughs> the, the right key to do that. And uh, so Todd and, and I are going to walk you guys through how to get to that point. So then, you know, ultimately you want Facebook ads to be something that you just, you turn it on, you know, okay, I need some yeah. new, more business, yeah. turn it on. Okay. I got business, turn it back off. So, um, <laughs> that's awesome. So no, that's, that's, that's what's coming that. up on February 19th. And we've got a whole schedule of, uh, training classes coming up there. 
Uh, I did want to share this before I got too far away from it, though. <laughs> Brian uh, said uh, you would be amazed at how much coffee Eric brought into the office to get ready for his show. So uh, uh, I, I did indeed restock the coffee. So uh, cheers, Brian. There's a <laughs> coffee for everybody at the office. If you yeah. ever uh, managed to get to Imbrilliance headquarters, which you won't because we don't list it for everybody. <laughs> but <laughs> if you're here, if you get the magic invite, coffee's on me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to find it. I, Albuquerque's not that big. I'm going to find it. <laughs> well, you get the invite. You know, oh, okay. VIP right. status, well, man. It's, it's more fun to find it. Like a scavenger. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So the, the other thing that, uh, the other few things that I've got coming up here, uh, right before DAX, I'll be heading out to Las Vegas and uh, presenting two seminars there, Social Media 101, Why and How. And then digital marketing, growing your business with email marketing. Uh, so that's going to be happening at the International Awards and Personalization Expo in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, February uh, 18th. I'm sorry, February 18th. Um, and then the next day, February 19th, there at that International Awards Expo, I'll be on a sublimation panel with uh, Jimmy Lamb from Sawgrass and Lisa, I think it's Elston uh, from JDS. So the three of us will be. Uh, on the hot seat. So ask us any questions. Uh, we've got a list of questions just in case, but uh, hey, we'll, we'll answer anything. If you guys know uh, Jimmy Lamb and uh, you'll know that he'll he'll talk for a long time, which is great information. And Lisa actually <laughs> is a uh, is is a fantastic presence as well yeah. with lots of great information. So uh, I'm just hoping to uh, to get a word in edgewise and, and actually say something useful. So <laughs> you definitely have something useful to say, but I mean, you got, you got some fighting to do. Jimmy's it, it'll, have, it'll be, it'll be a fight. Maybe I'll get him some uh, margaritas first. So maybe he'll be off his game of hair. That but, might work. Uh, that might work. Man. Throw him <laughs> <on>. <laughs> uh, for sure. And then uh, Dax, Kansas city, as we've talked I about lots it. of great stuff going on there. I'm presenting a, a seminar called starting in e-commerce, what works and what nice. didn't. And that's on February 21st. Uh, we're going to have the decorators community booth there. Uh, we're going to have the educators lounge uh, in between ourselves and our friend Clay from CorelTrainer.com. Uh, so the educators lounge hosted by uh, Dax, but we will be, we've been given the keys to that castle. So um, we're going to have a Cannot charging station wait. there, a futon, yeah. just come and hang out, um, be part of it. That's booth 405, 403, 405, something like that. Um, <laughs> it will be hard to miss folks, but we'll yeah. be in and out of that booth. And I know personally, I'll, I'll say if I'm there, if I'm over at that booth, I'm there to teach. So come with your questions and uh, get some value out of us. Sure, for sure. All right, cool. So yeah, lots, lots happening, lots going on, but uh, totally. Eric, I think we have, uh, we've, we've done it a great, yeah. great show today. Thanks so much to Jay bear for all the nuggets he gave awesome. us in, in a quick turn. And then uh, Michael, fantastic information. I'm just really yeah. helped to help. I, hopefully you guys are able to take from that, 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 you know, Hey, I got to work on my business, but I also have to understand yeah. what that goal is, you know, so, so have some financial plan. So we'll get links up there to, to get in touch with Michael, make sure that you reach out to him. He said he, he's just a great ear to listen to. And I, I think after you actually have a chance to, to get some one-on-one -on -one time with him, uh, you, you'll just make sure you ask him about what his services are, because I think he can really help you. So um, definitely good stuff there. All right. So yes, yeah. Eric, we are, we are come to the close of this. Oh, yeah, we finally, we got into bonus time a little bit, but not too much. And once again, I have to just say a great show, Jay and Michael both both awesome and definitely want to take a second to uh, wish all the best once again to our missing regular guy terry combs so <laughs> terry i hope you're feeling better man and uh thank you for letting me keep the seat warm uh, <laughs> but thank you also to our excellent sponsor impressions expo more expo coming up and more of us at expo coming up excellent yeah and thanks so much to eric for sitting in but also all <laughs> of the stuff that he does in the background for us too he uh, he is truly batman and uh, <laughs> we we appreciate all of his his efforts. So uh, next week we are going to be talking about love really. Um, yeah. <laughs> speaking you know, of, Valentine's, of Day. Valentine's day, it will be Valentine's day and not, not just Terry and I sharing our love for each other. Um, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, we're going to have a topic around that, you know, what, what we love in our business and, and, and what we, you know, how to, how to love our customers and things like that. So uh, working on mm -hmm. getting that all put together and we may even have some special guests. Uh, Marshall, I did. I did get your email. Um, it's actually <laughs> setting my intentions. And that is uh, right after this is to get caught up on my email. So I uh, look for a return email there, Marshall. And uh, shameless plugs happening inside the comments. So make sure you head over to uh, facebook.com slash two regular guys to check that out. 
Absolutely. And uh, until then, until we get to just share our love with you guys <laughs> next week, uh, I'm Eric Campbell in for Terry Combs, and he's Aaron Montgomery. And we are the Two Regular Guys. Thank you for listening to Two Regular Guys. Check out our website at tworegularguys.com. That's the number two, regularguys.com. You can also interact with us over at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash tworegularguys, or send us a tweet, twitter.com slash tworegularguys. And we have a YouTube page. You can find all that from our website, tworegularguys.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to spending some time with you again next week.